All right, howdy everyone. The time is 10.30 p.m. It is a late one today, and it is August 2nd. Welcome to another update from Great Lakes Weather. The newest models have just came out. That's kind of why I waited until a later time to do this update, but it'll be ready for when the storms and the heat comes tomorrow. Today, we are only focused on Wednesday, okay? Because Wednesday, there's going to be a lot of action in the weather. So, we're dealing with, first of all, on Wednesday, heat, and then potential for severe thunderstorms, and there's kind of variabilities in the timing. And I want to time this out really good because, um, depending on the timing, is going to depend, is going to really help me decide whether I'm going to chase this because I can't really chase until after 4 o'clock. So, I'm going to get the timing on that, and then we will break down all the severe weather things going on today or tomorrow. So let's do that. Before we get to that, make sure you are on all of our different platforms. All of them are listed for you here. If you're watching on desktop, scan that QR code in the bottom right hand corner and you will be able to get connected with everything Great Lakes Weather has to offer for you. Especially get on our YouTube because if we go chasing, that's where we'll be live. So check us out there. Alrighty, let's get right to it. All right, so here's the Storm Prediction Center's latest update. This is from sbc.noaa.gov. So you can see here, slight risk for severe thunderstorms across much of lower Michigan right here, going pretty much spanning a line from uh, areas such as Flint, Lansing, Grand Rapids, down towards parts of South Haven, and areas down towards Benton Harbor. So it's kind of a line going from northeast to southwest. And then farther east, you have a marginal risk, so pretty much covering, encapsulating the entire lower Michigan region. And then this also includes areas such as northwestern Indiana and northern Indiana is in this as well. We don't really expect any severe weather to continue farther southeast than that, but you can see all of the different cities that are populated that are kind of in this region. Chicago, Grand Rapids, more along the lines of Illinois, but the higher threat for tornadoes does exist in parts of Michigan, particularly northern Michigan, and we're going to look at why that is the case in just a minute. Tornado risk, again, northern Michigan, Grand Rapids, Lansing, Flint, those areas are the, have the greatest probability tomorrow of seeing tornadoes. The real biggest threat from this, though, is wind and heavy rain. There's going to be a lot of rain with this, maybe upwards of one to two inches of rain, much needed in our area, so thankfully we're getting that but also the hail potential does exist as well. So hail potential of around 5%. So that's not really super significant, but there is potential for all severe hazards from this, as you can tell. A lot of different ingredients coming together, particularly the fact that we have a very unstable air mass that's going to be settling over the region. And let's take a look at that real quick with pivotal weather. So here is the height anomaly. This kind of shows the, what the what it's like in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So you can really see, um, not really shown super defined on this graphic, but you can see that there's kind of a ridge building in right along this area here. So this area has kind of a plume of heat kind of building in from the south. Warm, moist air, very warm. Dew point's gonna be in the mid 70s potentially tomorrow prior to the cold front's passage. And you can kind of picture that on this graphic here as well. So you can kind of see that trough kind of digging down into the upper Midwest. This is what's going to bring us our weather, this cold front that is connected to this. Right here is where we're expecting to see that cold front, and that is where our severe weather is really going to initiate later on in the afternoon after about 1 p.m. across the regions that were shown in the slight risk area. So pretty much anywhere between 1 p.m. and I'd say around 10, 11 p.m. is really when these storms are really going to show their energy in the Great Lakes region. Now, timing is kind of an issue here. It could come as early as 3 p.m. or it could come as late as 6 p.m. We're still trying to figure out, based on what the models are saying, what is going to happen. But before we get to what is being shown for severe weather potential, we are going to talk about the heat. And let me tell you, the heat is really decent. It's probably going to be one of the hottest days we've had this year. Um, in fact, there's a heat advisory out for much of the Great Lakes region. And I'll show you that in just a minute, but let's progress this a little bit. So this is overnight tonight. We get into Wednesday morning, and then Wednesday, you can really see that heat starting to build. You can kind of see where that warm front's kind of settling in. Um, parts of Grand Rapids are going to be in the 80s. 
and then you also have those temperatures in the 90s which is this the feels like reading feels like the 90s in parts of Michigan let's zoom in on this a little bit to get a better idea of how this is going to build in so we're going to look at sun's down now sun rises get that heat building in is er er quite early in the morning in fact probably around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock you can see temperatures really starting to build already into the 90s remember this is the feels like reading this is not the actual temperature but actually our temperature is going to build into about the 90s across parts of Indiana Ohio and southern Michigan so it is going to be really hot okay the heat index is really going to show that in just a minute by the time we get to around uh, I'd say noon noon we're already seeing temp he feels like readings in around 100 degrees near the lake shore even in parts of the lake shore and then um, mid to upper 90s across Indiana and southern Michigan it's gonna be a hot one okay you're gonna wanna have an extra extra supply of water handy and air conditioning it's gonna be hot if you're in, if you're susceptible to heat exhaustion or heat stroke definitely consider just staying in the air conditioner all right it's gonna be a hot one so let's continue getting into the afternoon hours you can see temperatures are already getting up to a hundred across parts of southern Michigan northern Indiana and kind of following a band down into northwest Indiana and then where you see these temperatures dropping into the 70s is really where we could spe expect some storms to initiate later on so this is at 3 p.m. you can kind of see some thunderstorms are starting to develop and kind of dropping that temperature across Van Buren Bent Harbor so it's gonna be a short-lived heat event thankfully we don't want to deal with heat for that long but it will it will quickly end as those storms move through and cool things down quite a bit so that's something to be glad about but we there's gonna be some severe weather we've got a lot of instability with this setup here with the high heat high dew points high heat high moisture really able to spark some thunderstorms okay so that's gonna move through and then on Thursday morning we're back into somewhat cooler weather if you live across northern parts of the Great Lakes region I'm still dealing with some heat on Thursday if you are in the southern areas but there will be more thunderstorms initiating ahead of that cold front not as significant though so this is kind of the big event we're watching right here so let's look at the actual radar first of all here's the list of heat advisories that are currently out you can even see some of those severe thunderstorms that are firing across um, parts of the Upper Peninsula, Wisconsin, associated with that cold front that will be impacting our area later on tomorrow. The heat advisory for heat index values up to 105 across northern Indiana, southern Michigan, western Ohio, all these areas could see some pretty high heat indexes later on in the later on during the day tomorrow, starting around 11 a.m. I'd say, and then continuing through the evening, where especially where places do not see thunderstorms. I think everyone's really going to see something from this event, though, that is in the slight risk area. I think it's going to be pretty widespread. The question is, what is going to be severe? Not, I don't think everyone's going to see severe weather, but let's look at that real quick and break down what is happening with the current model. So this is the HRRR model, kind of the more higher resolution giving us a better idea of what could possibly happen so let's show this is the storms moving through right now across parts of Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula they will begin to dissipate by morning they will kind of start to die out a little bit but you may have some initiation of some thunderstorms across northern Michigan get a sounding up there marginal severe potential really showing more signs uh, maybe showing a few signs of some thunderstorm activity but there's going to be warmer air in the in uh, higher levels of the atmosphere which really w can stunt st thunderstorms from staying strong and you can kind of see that they're weakening as they move through so progressing this forward you get more storms developing around 1 p.m. across northern Michigan you get a sounding around this area you can see that marginal tornado potential again tornadoes are a potential possibility with this setup you got really high clap you got really high tops in these clouds and really low cloud bases really um, good helicity with this and I'll show that graphic in just a minute but for continuing to progress it you can kind of see a line begins to develop with these storms around 3 p.m. so this is according to the HRRR there's another model that shows it a little bit later but around 3 p.m. you've got thunderstorms ongoing across parts of um, lower Michigan 
packing severe potential, higher cloud bases with these storms, it, it appears. But if you get closer to an actual storm cell or the sounding, actually shows cloud bases quite significantly high with those. But you can kind of see it kind of develops into a well-defined line of strong thunderstorms. And just with the high instability in the atmosphere, it can really, this cold front can really just be fueled by the atmosphere that you see. And again, expecting instability to drop as you get down towards Ohio. The dynamics really aren't there in parts of Ohio, which is why it's focused towards Michigan and Indiana. And there may be some lagging thunderstorms in the backside. Those likely will not pack as much of a potential because the other storms will already soak up the cape. So real quick, I would like to backtrack to when these when these storms first begin to initiate on the back side of the lake, we're going to freeze frame it at hour 19. This is about 2 p.m. So 2 p.m. when the storms begin to develop. Let's get some severe weather analysis here. So we're going to go to the Cape values. Cape values are relatively high, um, around 4,000. These are definitely supportive of super potential, and there's little convective inhibition in the atmosphere ahead of these storms. Um, not too much, some low numbers, but um, basically convective inhibition measures the ability or the inability for an atmosphere to initiate storms, and you can see that that convective inhibition is low across our area, so not really any capping in the atmosphere. Cloud bases, um, actually relatively high until you get to the storm themselves, so they get to the low point there, and that's where you're going to want to watch for those um, s lower clouds, maybe some rotating wall clouds here and there. And then the storm relative velocity, the ability or the spin in the atmosphere, that there's going to be a little bit of spin in the atmosphere ahead of these storms, which can really help to create more supercells, and it gets higher as you go up into parts of central eastern Michigan. So those places really have more of a measure of spin in the atmosphere. And then energy helicity still showing that there is some pretty decent spin in the atmosphere ahead of these storms. Um, d again, higher, more elevated across parts of Lansing, um, Flint regions still showing that greater severe potential there. Supercell composite values. So higher chance for supercell development across parts of Hastings, Lansing, Flint, Again, those areas I just showed you earlier. So potential for supercells, which are the precursor to tornadoes up in that area. Significant tornado parameters really only exist in parts of those areas I just showed you. And it actually is a little bit of a decent level north of Lansing, Michigan. So you're going to want to really, I guess, the big target area for tomorrow is Lansing. If you can get there on time, it looks like Lansing's the ideal location for chasers. I don't know if I'll make it up there in time, but my chase region will likely be somewhere around here. So let's get a look at that. Still showing that severe potential, but really not showing that tornado potential that is evident across parts of the region. So you can really see the storms are going to have high tops, likely packing some hail with those higher tops, those high strong updrafts, and they really show a well-defined line later on. So this model points to an earlier threat, 3 p.m. These storms are really going to start to barrel through the area that is in slight risk area. Now let's compare that to the NAM3K, okay? So NAM3K showing a different story. Oh, this is the HRW. HRW isn't really, does show also kind of agree with a later threat around 6 p.m. when these storms begin to move through. If it is a 6 p.m. threat, I can chase it. So, but it really doesn't show that severe potential that could be packed with these storms. Um, it does in that particular setup, but it does show more convective inhibition in the atmosphere. So that's what the HRW is showing. Now here's the NAM3K. So let's take a look at this one real quick. So NAM3K, this is the storms moving through currently in the Upper Peninsula. Redevelopment is expected ahead of that cold front. This, this model projects that it will be moving slower. So let's progress that a little bit forward. Some initiation of some thunderstorms around four, around 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. with cape, cape values of 6,000 according to the NAM3K. That is significant numbers 
Um, I'd be surprised if they get that high. Low cloud bases, high cloud tops, again, shown by the NAM3K, packing severe potential. And then behind that, you've got the more well-defined line. This actually makes more of a target southward across parts of the lower peninsula and northern Indiana. Line becomes pretty well-defined, packing decent tornado potential. You've got that arc that is shown in the photograph. And look at the sudden collapse in dew points in the midlet in the upper levels of the atmosphere that can really that can create some pretty significant rainfall because there's not much moisture can make it up into those higher levels that will create some significant rainfall with these storms very likely so supercell composite values are at 16 and it does show pretty decent potential for tornadoes according to the NAM3K and a more southward mode of storm development. But again, the NAM3K does like to stretch things a little bit. So they do, it does tend to over-exaggerate, but showing a very good line of storms continuing all the way down into northwestern Ohio, still packing some severe weather potential as we get into the overnight hours, but quickly dying out with some potential reintensification back in Illinois. Now, NAM3K, I don't usually take it as the f most trustworthy resource, but it is good to look at as a comparison to the HRRR. So I want to pause it at this particular point when the storms look like they're really starting to fire. So let's go to hour 22. This shows the time of about mm, 4 p.m. You got storms kind of initiating near Benton Harbor. So let's look at the surface base cape. Significant cape values of 4,000, maybe even 5,000. Let's progress it a little bit forward. Yep, 4,500 cape values. So significant cape ahead of this line of storms that could potentially develop. Not really much convective inhibition from what I can see. Yep, low convective inhibition. Very good setup for storm development. Measuring the spin in the atmosphere. Spin is actually displaced a little bit lower into parts of lower Michigan. You still have Lansing as a player, according to this model run, but it does progress it southward a little bit further into Kalamazoo County, packing tornado potential. Cape Valley is about 4,000. You look at the supercell composite. Supercell composite is not really showing. Supercell composite shows some higher levels, especially focused among those thunderstorms of even about 23 ahead of some of those storms that are beginning to kind of initiate that will be dropping southward before the main cold front arrives. Some significant tornado parameters, rather high, especially with that particular storm coming into St. Joe County, northeastern St. Joe County. I want to watch that if the NAM 3K tends to play out as, as it's shown, but two different potential setups here. You can kind of see that there is spin in the atmosphere ahead of these. You can see that cape value. So really multiple ways this can play out on tomorrow. So I'm going to just have to keep my eye on the models. Hopefully it will come late enough to where I can chase it. If I'm chasing, you're going to want to check out the YouTube channel. But that's pretty much all that's kind of being shown by these latest models so thanks for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed make sure to like if you like make sure to subscribe and get future updates and future storm chase info and check out all the other platforms and leave a comment if you have any questions thank you all so much and enjoy the rest of your evening